Precious Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you again for this awesome moment as we turn to the pages of your word. We thank you that your word is spirit and your word is life. And we're just going to look at who we are, trophies of Christ's victory. We give you praise and give you honor in Jesus' mighty name and everybody. Say, hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14. And the title is Trophies of Christ's Victory. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a message that I believe God has given me and the language is there for us today. The Amplified Version says, But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Who in Christ? Hallelujah. Amen. Who, who? Who in Christ always, not sometimes, not once a week, not once a day, but always, eh, eh? hallelujah. Is it, is it saying sometimes? Is it saying maybe once a, once a year? Always, Bananke Pastor, today has been a bad day. Wait a minute. Always leads us in triumph as trophies of Christ's victory and through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. Glory to God. So I just want to remind us of, of, of this beautiful promise that God has given us. This beautiful promise that we have in Christ. There is nothing beautiful than knowing that that God in Christ always so you can come before God when you are fully persuaded that he will lead you to triumph. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Always. That means that I can come in the presence of God mm -hmm. Is that it? Mm -hmm. that, I, uh, that when I say I am coming to pray it's an ask hour, I am very sure that God is going to hear me. Hallelujah. And if I know that God is going to hear me, and I say, Lord, I am believing God for a place in Seta where we can just have, you know, a hover as a home. I thank you. I bring it before you in Jesus' mighty name. Then I know. If I, then I know that God has answered and that God is leading me in triumph. So I go to that place and I like the place, but I felt like I prayed before God. So, after praying and I know that God has led me, then, what's the evidence? I walk in thanksgiving. I don't go back again and say, Mukama, you kid, by the way, yesterday I got you, I got you, Mukama, I'm paid you for. Hallelujah. After one week, Mukama, I got you, I got you, I got you, after one month, Mukama, I told you I need, but, but, but that's how we pray. Oh, Baal, oh, Baal, oh, Baal, oh, Baal. Oh, Baal. Aren't you God? Eh? Elijah, right? The false prophets, right? How are they praying? Oh, Baal, oh, Baal, oh, Baal, give us. They were making repetitions of the prayers. You understand what I'm saying? Because for them, they are God. You have to shout. Hallelujah. So many of us, when we pray, after praying, that's a prayer of petition. Listen. After you have made a prayer of petition, then you, if you believe, as God answered you, as God heard you, yes. he has, eh? you believe so, right? Then why do you come back and ask? Why do you come back and petition? Except you don't believe that he has answered. Because you want him to work within your time frame. So you get you come back, Mukama, Nakugambi, Omusaj, Julius, 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 Julius. After four months, Mukama, Mukama, Julius, Rekaba, Seleke, Ibakota, Silabake, Retelevo. One month, one year, Mukama. That's how many of us are praying, and no wonder we're not seeing the results. We must appreciate, we, we know the prayer of petition. And no thanksgiving. So if I've prayed for a, for, for a job. Oh, let me use my example. I prayed for a, a place for other ministries. 
And I know God has answered me. So the next time I come and I say, Oh, Father, I thank you for that. What? I thank you for the place. You understand? Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Because with thanksgiving, God, I, mean, I give thanks to God because I know that he has led me in triumph by faith. And if I do that, and I come back every time thanking God for that house, I mean, for that place, I leave it. So I walk, and a gentleman, these guys were in, uh, uh, in Gilgabi, and I've been wanting Gilgabi for a start, because it's good for a start, because I want to raise, I want to raise a certain creed be before. So they leave the place. Hallelujah. So the manager who is a Muslim looks for me. A Muslim is looking for a pastor to have a church in his premise. You understand what I'm saying? Now, that day, I, I walk, I walk, I walk, I came, I, I forgot what brought me here. But God was leading my footsteps. So I wanted to take this side. But somebody, somebody told me, you want to take the other side. You understand those, those instincts. Then you, you walk and I get to say, Hey, Muslim, but they don't know it. You'll go be a lichi, you live free. You understand what I'm saying? Now, because I made a prayer when I went to the other place, I made it once. And I didn't ask God for a, a home, I mean, a place again for a, because I know he has led me in triumph. If you pray like that, make your request once. Don't come back and petition. After making your request once, come in, thanksgiving, and act by faith. Let me tell you something. I'll say, that, I'll say that again. Things are going to come to you easily. Amen. The reason as to why they don't come is because you come back. That means you didn't believe God. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. Hallelujah. Have I made sense? Yes. Because I don't want to go there before I just show you why some of us are not getting results in prayers. If it is God's timing, I mean, if, it's, if God has answered, then he knows the perfect time. So, I, he doesn't work within my time frame. He works within his time frame. Many times we don't see the answers, we don't see, the, because we expect God to work within our time clock. Yeah. But God doesn't work within our time clock. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. I believe that this is the right time for me to go to Gilgabi, because there's unfinished business. Glory. With the people who used to come to Gilgabi and run for Ebena Binyinida. Now they are coming as sons and daughters in the house. Hallelujah. Clap for me. Too the wala. Glory. So, he always, listen, he always, not sometimes, not sometimes, he always, do you know what that means? Do you know the confidence to know that God always will provide for you fees? Not for one time, but not for one same, then you miss the other same. Always. So you go to school knowing this God always will provide for me Finish. I'm going to study if it's five years and I'm going to finish because he which has begun a good work in me will carry it. There is no way God can fail to provide for you peace because if he was going to fail, he will not take you to her. Huh? That's not the way God works. It's not the way God works. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. And it's going there for... No, no, no. So, when he said leading us in triumph, the... The... The, the definition, the, the Hebrew definition is to, 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 first of all, a triumph is a successful ending of a struggle or of a contest. Okay? A successful ending. Hallelujah. That when you are contesting, you are at the end of it all, you're going to be successful. Hallelujah. Until, if you're beginning the Premier League, a successful ending is that Man City won it. Now, when we talk about triumph, we come with that perspective in mind that it's a successful ending. I am in it to win it because God is in it. So when I enter relationship, if I enter marriage, wedding, it's a successful ending. Yes, we may have our fights, but we have this end in mind. Because God leads us in triumph. Hallelujah. So, to celebrate means to 
celebrate your triumph. To celebrate by faith that you're going to end well. To celebrate by faith that you're going to finish well. Hallelujah. To celebrate by faith that I am going to finish well. That I am not with, I'm not with my wife. We're not entering in this thing. One two years ago. Two years ago. Hallelujah. I feel sorry for people who, who enter to just try a relationship. Pastor, let me so go and pastor. Let me so let me go to Gabi and we try. I'm not I'm going to conquer. Amen. I'm going to conquer. Amen. Hallelujah. So everything you enter into, you go with the end. A successful ending, it's going to be a success because God in Christ always leads me in triumph. That means it's a, it's a successful ending. God is saying, I am going to lead it to a successful ending. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. You've got a child. I'm going to lead that child into a successful Amen. ending. Hallelujah. Amen. It means also to cause one to triumph. Here is to celebrate. Yeah? But again it says to cause one. But the one, who, the one which is causing you is the Christ in you. That I am in you to cause you to triumph. Hallelujah. So you know that it's not your works. It is the work of God. That God is causing me inside there, not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. I'm going to, it's causing me to triumph. How can you go to school and fail, yet the one in you is causing you to what? To triumph. Am I making sense? And he's saying, the one which is in you, he always. But Pastor Adrian, you see sometimes life is hard. Eh? You see like me, Angie? That's not my line. Sometimes what? Nice. Sometimes you get poor. You, uh, that's not mine. Because when he's saying, he always. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Now, so now, let's go to figuratively, because I want to define the thing two ways, because it, it brings my gospel. Figuratively, when he says he's leading us in triumph, number one, it's to conquer. A conquering. The question is, what is he conquering? Then number two, it means to give victory. Are you seeing the two different things? One, it means to conquer. So God leads us in triumph. God conquers. Yeah? Then by Hebraism, it means to give a victory. So that means there is a place where himself, he conquers. Isn't it? There is another place whereby... He gives you the victory. Do you know, this is my work. I want to conquer. But again, there's another place whereby I give you the word. The victory. So those are two different things. Am I making sense? So we want to see where he conquers. And then where he gives victory. Because the Bible says, I am more than a conqueror in what? In Christ Jesus. Let's start with conquer. Colossians 2.15. What does the Bible say? Colossians 2.15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Hallelujah. He triumphed over the principalities. So he conquered. He conquered witchcraft. He conquered the pearls of our car. Isn't it? He conquered poverty. He conquered anger. He conquered depression. He conquered unresentment. He conquered unforgiveness. He conquered lust. Hallelujah. He conquered the principalities. Every dominion, every power, every name that is to be named, he conquered. He conquered COVID before COVID came. He conquered red eyes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever they're going to bring and name it, he conquered it. Hallelujah. Amen. So I was with my neighbor, and then I told me, Pastor, don't come, man, and get these eyes. I said, you say for me? Red eyes. I, I, I live in suffer. I wanted to just see how they look like. <laughs> no, don't, don't come. I said, I wanted, me, I wanted to see and see, man, and get these red eyes. This banana. Are the eyes what? Red. red. 
So it was for me to get red eyes. Nalinda, Nalinda, Nalinda. I'm not getting what? Red eyes. So he's in the house. So everyone is fearing. But he conquered red eyes. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that again I'm going to look for a certain lady who has HIV I test. <laughs> uh, wisdom, right? And so some, some people are foolish, right? Let me test the cord. You test. God is so foolish, you come, come to heaven. You die, but come what? So, we believe that God has conquered every principality, every dominion, every power. God has conquered sin. Isn't it? Hallelujah. So, it's going to in Christ, he leads. Ah, he always conquers. Glory to God. The Bible says that Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Listen to me. The Bible doesn't say, 1 John 3, 8, I think. It doesn't say that Jesus was manifest to see if he will destroy. The Bible says he was manifest. He came to destroy. Wait a minute. When did he come? Over 2,000 years ago. Did he destroy the works of the devil? So are they destroyed? Can you own again? Oh, you are far. He, but okay, sometimes look at the gospel. Okay, help me understand. The Bible says Jesus was manifested to destroy. So poverty is a thing of the past. Witchcraft is a thing of the past. Sickness is a thing of the because it is what? Conquered. Isn't it? So why are we fighting? Why are we menaring? Is that, is that, is that what is there? Why? Why are we men here? Hallelujah. Amen. Hey! Amen. Why are we men? Two men are rich. Oh, men are rich. Yes, thank you. Edda. Hallelujah. Oh, you never intercede, Saul. No, you never intercede, Saul. Come on. To live out. We are filthy. And how do you say filthy? And then what? Filthy is what? How do you say filthy in Uganda? And now, and now, and now, some kind of, <laughs> Father, we are filthy. We have, we are filthy rocks. <laughs> Help us, Lord. We are nothing without it. Hallelujah. Kati, Papa Tejagamba, I thought this one was a trophy of Christ's victory. Neti Am I making sense? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, if you know that you conquered, why are you still battling with what's already conquered? Why are we conscious that you're going to fail? Okay? Why are you conscious that you won't go to school? Why are you conscious that you're, going to, that you're not going to get married? Why are you conscious that you won't be in a soul? Why are you conscious that it is hard? Why are you conscious of fear? Some of us can't even win a soul because in our mind already, it's a mountain. It's what? No. Even going to pray with somebody, it's like, Phew. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? No wonder you're coming without results. Glory to God. I realized something. And I need to preach on it some other day. And God was telling me very clear. Many times when we are praying, it's because we are conscious of failure. That's why we pray against failure. You're conscious of failing, that your marriage, is not, your marriage might fail. Then you come to pray. But in reality, you're, you're saying, I am the head, I'm not a tail, I am above. But in reality, you're saying that because your spirit is conscious. And I've realized that many of you in that level, you're the same. Who told you your marriage is going to fail? Then why are you praying like that? Who told you you won't sell? Who told you, Oli? Am I making sense? Mm. Do you know that many Christians 
are praying like that because they are conscious. Okay, when you're coming to pray, why are you conscious of pain? Why are you conscious of sickness? And God was telling me the reality is that I don't want them to be conscious of this other side. Let, them, let us be conscious of this other side. Never see yourself as one which has no job. Until you see yourself as one which has no job, you will conquer. You understand what I'm saying? Mukama, I'm going out. I, I need clients. Rake up. But in reality, you're fighting. <laughs> Who told you that you won't get clients? I, I, are you getting it? Eh? I, need to, I need to make money today. But in reality, you're fighting against the possibility of not getting clients. Why don't you just, why don't you just wake up in the morning and be conscious that it is good? See yourself getting client after client. The, that guy had a problem with me, my manager of, of, of Gilgabi. She was telling me the, the place. Eh? Me, I was seeing the, the compound. But how much is this place? Has, so, now in the Wali, in our room, Mujimani, eh? right? But for me, I was seeing a tent. So I was saying, nay, this place is very good. It brings me, I also bring him back here. You find out what I'm saying? Yes, I'm coming to Gilgabi, but I'm conscious that we're going to feel it. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because Jesus was manifested 2,000 years ago and he destroyed the works of the devil. Poverty is a thing of the past. Witchcraft is a thing of the past. Failure is a thing of the past. Every time you find yourself in battle, just tell them, excuse me, fear, you're a thing of the past. Hallelujah. That one I've said, but I'll preach it one day, you'll get it because you're not, you know, it hasn't sunk in here. Okay. Pastor Arian, you're going to preach. Those days I used to be conscious of the numbers. Huh. Will I make 70? Increase. Uh, I was praying from a place of unconscious. And Coco. You get a point? Amen. Hallelujah. But God gave me a very beautiful picture when I was. In a dream, I was taking a pics of a full house. That's the picture that I see. Every time when I come, whether it's two people, I see the other one. I'm training my conscience to be one of increase. So when I'm praying for increase, I'm not praying for this. I'm praying according to the other experience. Are you getting me? There are those who are praying for the increase because they're seeing this. Hallelujah. Then there are those who are praying for increase because they're seeing the other side. Not all of us will have the same results. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So in me, it's having this doesn't mean that I'm not full. Glory to God. Now that's faith. Hallelujah. Yeah. Am I making sense? Yeah. So, listen. The enemy has a perfect perception of many Christians that the Christians have for themselves. The, the enemy knows you better than you know yourself sometimes. Because they were led. The, the Bible says here in, let's, let's go back, Colossians 2 15, it says, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Hallelujah. He conquered them. They know that the one which conquered them is in you. They know it. They know that you are a trophy of Christ's victory. When they look at you, they look at the trophy of Christ. They know it. Because they were conquered. They know it. They see you as a trophy because they were led triumph. Because I'm going to show you again. They were led in a triumphal procession. When Paul, this is portion of the scripture, he showed you, if you go back to church history a long time, that when a king has conquered, they get the prisoners, right? And then they put them behind and they ride them across the whole streets to show them that he has what? Conquered. Hallelujah. Then after that, he comes and shows the goods and the spoils. So Jesus conquered poverty behind, and he's marching, and hey, and everyone is seeing poverty, witchcraft, all, all those things being what? As prisoners. 
Hallelujah. And then Pastor Adrian is there cheering. Hallelujah. Then he comes and sees me and holds me and lifts me up as a trophy and says, let me tell you something. You've overcome. Amen. You understand? So they know that I'm a, I'm a what? I'm a trophy of Christ's victory. But a Christian doesn't know that. That's why they'll come. Because you don't know, your, you don't know who you are. Because you have this illusion that all in coco. And yet you are a trophy. Trophy means you, the success. You are a success. Hallelujah. When, 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 when Arsenal, okay, I'll, I'll give an example. And thank God it has come, I was, I, was, I was going to miss it. The battle belongs to who? To the Lord. Not me, right? Yeah. When Arsenal and Manchester are playing a final, right? And they win. Let me say Arsenal wins an FA Cup final. And then they come and lift the trophy. But they first fight. Then they come and lift the trophy. You understand? The devil wants you to shift position to make you think that you're the one to fight the battle. Hallelujah. That's why Mumenya every now and then, he wants you to put in a place of fighting. There is no way you're going to fight the battle and win Satan. There is no way. Hallelujah. It is Jesus fighting and the victory is ours for the taking. Because after fighting, then he comes and lifts you and says, Adrian, you don't have to fight again. I have gone through it, defeating the power of the enemy. So the battle is not mine. The battle is for the Lord. Yeah. I am a trophy. I'm just waiting for the battle to be what? Done. Then Christ... Christ can come and lift what? And lift his trophy. You understand? I don't have to lay a finger against poverty. I don't have to lay a finger against witchcraft. I don't. I'm a trophy. Me, I'm just where? I'm just there ready to be what? Current. I'm not really making sense. Because you guys might miss this point. Hallelujah. Who told you to go on one? When there's an FA Cup, World Cup final, they put the trophy there, right? Does the trophy fight? No. Imagine the trophy leaving its very good mirror, the place, and then I need to enter in there. You understand what I'm saying? Those are Christians. You are there to be lifted. But after someone has what? Has triumphed. Because you're the symbol of success. When they come and lift Spain, the trophy is a symbol of success. You understand? This is what we are fighting for. Hey. So Jesus is fighting for who? Satan is fighting for who? Answer me. Jesus is fighting for who? Satan is fighting for who? They are all fighting for your faith. They are all fighting for your soul. So they have to go and fight the battle. Because for you are waiting to be lifted. Because you are a trophy. Yeah. Hallelujah. You are a symbol of success. Without that, you, without that, Christ cannot come and say, I have the... He can't. He has to fight and come and show the world. This is what I've been fighting for. This is what I've been fighting for. You understand what I'm saying? Satan doesn't need your car. He doesn't need your marriage. Yeah. He needs your faith. If he can steal your faith, he's done. Jesus doesn't need to give you a car. He needs your faith. Because this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand what I'm saying? So we have two people that have to fight because I'm a symbol of success. Do you think Jesus can be who he is without the church? What gives him the symbol of strength? The church. Do you know who you are? That there should be a perfect balance for Christ to show us that he's victorious. There has to be the church. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the trophy is seeing Satan, pa, Jesus, pa, 
It's waiting for the one which will try us. And it's ready to be lifted by any. Who conquers? So when Jesus conquers all the principalities, then he walks the stairs. Hallelujah. Having what? Where is Pastor Adrian? Hallelujah. Where is Susan? He's walking the stairs. Where is planet? Where is Sharon? One, two, three. Yes! Do you understand what I'm saying? That is who you are. He loves you so much. You're so precious that he has to fight for you because you are his trophy. If you go and watch football, when you're going to Manchester, they'll take you to their room where they've won trophies, medals. When you're going to Arsenal, they'll take you to you understand what I'm saying? Because that's a symbol of our success. We value it so much. So when Jesus comes, whom does it show? Me. You. Because you didn't lay a finger. You were the price. Wait a minute. Is that what he says in a parable? That when the man came and saw how the field was beautiful, he went and sold everything and bought the field? That is you. Do you know how much Jesus values you? That it will take him to shed his blood for you? We just have to understand what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Amen. You must know who you are. Judge, you really must know who you are. Do you know what it means for Satan and Jesus to take war? You think they fought for you to get a car? You think they fought for you to get married? Hey. You are precious. Somebody say, I'm precious. I'm precious. I am celebrated. I'm celebrated. That means you are a success. Amen. You're the symbol of success. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When I see Premier League and Arsenal is buying this, money is buying this, they are fighting for one trophy. Yeah. Jesus comes to shed blood for one trophy. And that is you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You must know who you are. You are a trophy of Christ's victory. Somebody say, I'm a trophy of Christ's victory. When they ask, the leg, when they ask Real Madrid, we have 15 champion league titles. You understand? And they are... Eh? Hallelujah. Am I really making sense? So, never shift the battle. It's not yours to fight. It is yours to be lifted. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So the enemy knows you as a trophy of Christ's victory. But also, it means to give what? A victory. Amen. So, that means, after he has overcome, then he gives me the victory. So I celebrate a successful ending over the struggles and the contents that I have in life. Because he has given me the triumph. So I celebrate a, a successful ending. Because he which began a good work in me. What did he begin? Will carry it to completion. Till the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know what it means for God to say? Your marriage cannot fail because I began it. But above all, your marriage can fail because you are my trophy. I need this, I need this couple. So that every time... People are saying marriage or something. I can show, I can leave Sharon and what? And, and tell guys you can make it in marriage because I have a trophy there. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, with this mindset, can we fail? Now, there are people that are struggling, they are battling against diseases, right? There are those that are battling against divorce separations and cancer and all these things. And God is saying, I just learn to celebrate a successful ending because you are my trophy. He doesn't want you to focus on the battle. Focus on who you are. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalms 138 verses 8, I love this. The Bible says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Hallelujah. The Lord will perfect... Take him out. Take him out. 
the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Amen. Because Sharon's not even paying attention because of that. Take him out. I don't like this nonsense. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Hallelujah. But if you take a close context of this portion of scriptures, it's meaning your struggles. Because the Hebrew word there is gamar, of perfect is what? Gamar. Okay, when he says, I will perfect that situation in your life that seems to, that seems to be coming against you, he's saying, I will perfect it. Are you struggling with cancer? He says, but I will perfect it. Are you struggling with doubt? But he said, I will what? I will perfect it. So that the Hebrew word there is gamal, which means to bring to an end. God is saying, I'll bring to an end that situation in your life that seems to be disturbing you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says, I will perfect. So you can be here and there's a situation in your life and God is saying, no, but I will perfect it. Rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. There is so much better that I'm trying to do. It's okay. I'll bring it to what? To an end. Listen to me, guys. There is no situation that is permanent. I've learned something in this life. There is no situation that is permanent. Do you know why I, know, why I say that? Because Christ is coming back. So you can't be broke for the rest of your life. Christ will come back. Isn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. So this, okay, let me, you will die one day and you'll stop being broke. <laughs> Hallelujah. And enter heaven as well, which is broke. <laughs> Hallelujah. But there is no situation that is what? Permanent. Why? Psalm 138. I will perfect, I will bring it to an end. So, whenever you have a situation in your life, listen, take courage in this portion of scripture and know that God will perfect it. Perfect it. He will bring it to an end. I'll give an example. Do you know that in everything we enter into, God has an end in mind? Yeah. For example, what's the end of God when you come up with when you, when you come together with Sharon? And they can be there and they don't know. What's the end in mind when you're going to school? His end. See you. What's God's end in mind when you're doing the Harvard Ministries? Because everything we do, there's an end intended by the Lord. Now, if it's an end intended by the Lord, is it for failure? Can God intend you to fail? It is inconsistent for God to start something and fail. Banangi, I didn't know, but Banangi, you just have to die, divorce. Which God is that? Hallelujah. After fighting for you and lifting you, then he makes you fail. Hallelujah. James 5.11. We all know the story of Job, right? Hallelujah. Do you know the story of Job? We know the story of Job. The Bible says, Indeed, we count them blessed to endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. We see the end intended by the Lord. Now, if you read Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2, you seem like you don't see the end intended by the Lord, right? You understand what I'm saying? And he struggled, he lost this. But there was an end intended by the Lord. And if you go and read carefully that portion of scripture, okay, there's what the Bible says he had 3,000. And if you read at the end, Job 42, he multiplied it. If he had 3,000 cattle, uh, it says 6,000. He had 2,000, he had 4,000. He had how many kids? He got double, right? That's the end intended by it's a glorious end hallelujah so let me tell you something you have an end intended by the lord and it's a glorious end you just have to understand who you are this is how i know that a, a harbor is going to end well 
This is how I know that Ahava is going to end well. <laughs> Sometimes I, I envision five and ten years from now when I'm going to preach the gospel bread of life in maybe Paris. And every time I'm going in Paris, I carry my microphone. I have my... I have... I will call you guys, my Karasha. I will tell you guys, I call you guys Chirasha. Chirasha is not a bad one. So those are the ones I'm going to carry with. Hallelujah. So when I'm going to when I'm going to preach the gospel, hallelujah. I'm like Susan, at all. At all. We are going to the UK. God has opened the door favor. No. But but do you know what it means when I'm going to preach the gospel and I have Sharon, I have Planet, I have Trisha, I have Susan, I have Deborah walking behind me. You know where I got it from? I got it from my spiritual father. Whenever he's coming, he has all the pastors following him. All. When we're having a meeting and you see Apostle Emadim, you know, Papa has entered. Has entered somewhere and they're all walking like this. So when he's coming now, and he's so you're leading an army. Then all of them remember, yeah, 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 that is Deborah. Mm, that is that is it's not sweet picture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when somebody sees plant by the gamba papa, you get the wall. Hallelujah, you get the wall. You get the wall. Amen. They bag a mutirasha. That's my end in mind. Glory to God. Do you think sitting here for one year, God is, not, God is not working you for something? So, there is an end intended by the Lord. Let me tell you something, you too. Whatever situation it is in your marriage, there is an end intended by the Lord. You better find it. Amen. And give your life to it. Christian, when you're going to school, get that end and work on it. Hallelujah. But that's who we are. Quickly. So, Listen. Always start with a successful ending in mind. Now, this is a very simple thing again, but we might fail. Like every time, let me say you're, you're waking up to go to work. Start with a successful end. Because that's triumph. Triumph means a successful ending of a, sto- of a struggle of a contest. So if you want to live a triumphant life, you start with the end, a successful one. Imagine coming back home. How do you want to come back home? With a triumphant procession. I want to come back with milkshake for my wife, Sharon. But for you, you want to come with Jewish of Bitan. Hallelujah. That's your successful ending. Ah, I rebuke that. But have a successful ending when you're coming back. Have it what? In my case. These simple things. But these things are very important. Have a successful ending. How does it look like when you're done school? With school. How does it look like when you're doing your sim sim? Before you start, how does it look like? You think for me picturing me walking in front and the plants are following me, the sons are following me, but uh, Papa And it will happen, by the way, it will happen. It will happen. Glory to God. Glory to God. But that's my successful ending in mind. That's why I get crazy when you guys don't get me. Hallelujah. Some of you are going to disturb me. With my tribal possession. Hallelujah. Hey! So, paint a picture of the end that you want because that's try- you begin like that. Am I making sense? Jesus did that. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2, the Bible says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For the joy that was set before him. That means he had a joy that was set before him before he went to the cross. He defined the joy. That joy was to make you just uh, righteous. was to justify you was to be his trophy. He first defined the joy. Am I making sense? 
But you first define the joy. The joy that is set before you with your wife. Every day, define that joy. You, you, you'll take me out for, for milkshake. Define the joy of winning a soul. That's a problem with some of us. Just define. How does it look like when you've won a soul? Put it in your mind. Play it. Shalabak. But sometimes that's my name. Musabavich. Shalabak. Hallelujah. I'll deal with you guys. So, define the joy of a soul. Define that joy set before you of a successful marriage. Hallelujah. And walk by faith. Jesus defined the joy that was set before him. I set the joy when I'm going to preach the gospel. I do it. Hallelujah. Every time I preach, I'm like, mm. glory to God. So, if you want to live a triumphant procession, learn to define the joy and set it before you. Because we're learning from our own who? Our own Jesus. Can Trisha for once set, define the joy and set that before her when she go, before you go to school? Do it. Deborah, do it. Susan, do it. Guys, do what? Do it. Now, I'm going to, now, this is an instruction well, from the altar. Now, when I ask guys on Wednesday, uh, Papa, you talked about uh, triumphant procession. I'm like, I know you guys are talking. Papa, like, you're talking like babies, eh? Mama. Because I'm like, <laughs> you're unskilled. Who is in righteousness is unskilled like a baby. How does this baby talk? You, you had a mad? Like, how does it talk? How does it talk? Nah. Nah, huh. So that's how you are. Ma. So, planets, give us your testimony. Ma. But you want to come here. Ma. Hey! Imagine she's, imagine Susan is preaching and is preaching the law. That's how she is in the spirit, for example. Ma, bro. See, brief. Praise the Lord. Libro. Libro. Don't talk like a baby. Praise the Lord. Then after that, the guys come and say, but nugget. Oh, when I go and start to come back. Hey! Now, I have told you to define the joy that is set before you. Okay, now put him back on Wednesday. I'll call you on Wednesday. I'm going to say, the rules. Testimony. What did you learn last week? Praise the Lord. Mabita planet. Me black, please, please. Me black. Me black. Me black. Me black. Me Because Tante, anyway, Tante get there. Me. Me. I want to finish. I want to finish. Romans chapter 1 from verses 1 to 4. Now I like this one. From Paul, the Amplified Version, from Paul, a born servant of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, called to be an apostle, a special messenger set apart to preach the gospel, good news of and from God, which he promised in advance long ago through his prophets in the sacred scriptures, the gospel regarding his son. Listen to me. Okay? He's just talking about the gospel. The gospel regarding his son, who as to the flesh, his human nature was descended from what? David. As to his divine nature according to the spirit of holiness, was openly designated the Son of God in power. He was made the Son of God in power in a striking, triumphant, and miraculous manner by his resurrection from the dead. Again, we are seeing what he did. Like I told you guys, my gospel will take you back to who Jesus is and what he did. Hallelujah. From the dead. Now he's saying that he was designated the son of God in power in a triumphant manner by his resurrection. That when he was raised from the dead, he raised in a triumphant manner. But he was a suffering Messiah. But in rising up, he comes as a glorious Messiah. 
walk with me. But a triumphant manner. Because of his resurrection, meaning that Jesus was undefeated. Because he's triumphant. He was what? Undefeated. That means there is nothing that defeated Jesus. There is nothing that can defeat that man. Nothing. Name it. You understand what I'm saying? Now, wait a minute. I thought the Bible says that you were raised together with him. I thought. So if he was raised in a triumphant manner and you were raised together with him, so you were also raised in a triumphant this is a God in Christ who leads us in triumph. Always. Why? Because Jesus is undefeated. So there is no way you can be defeated because you also you were raised in a triumphant manner. Am I making sense? So if Jesus was undefeated, you are undefeated. If that's the manner of Jesus to walk in triumph, that's your manner of life. Because as he is, the Bible says, so he are you, we. If he was undefeated, I am and what? Undefeated. That's my life. That's my life. I refuse to live a normal life because I was raised together with Christ in a triumphant manner. That's the life that I know. There is nothing else that I know because I am a trophy of Christ's victory. So I don't know defeat. I don't know sickness. I don't know failure. All that I know is what? Health, wealth, peace, joy. Because I've been raised in a triumphant manner. Fruitful living is mine. Successful living is my manner of life. That's the only way I know how to live. The only way I know how to live, that's my manner. I'm fruitful. Amen. That's my manner of life. I'm successful. That's my manner of life. Because by the virtue of the resurrection, he triumphed over the enemy. So, can you tell me now? If you understand the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what it means, that we no longer preach what is in the cross, he rose. We preach after the cross. We preach the Christ after the cross. We preach the Christ after the cross. What the things meant to him after the cross. The consequences after the cross. And after the cross, he said, well, he raised in a triumphant manner by the resurrection of his death. So we preach triumphant procession. Because that is who you are. By the virtue that you've been raised from the dead. The day you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. So somebody said triumphant living is mine. It's my manner of life. I am blessed. I am above. I am fruitful. I am successful. I am increased. I am multiplication. That's my manner of life. As simple as that. As simple as that. You remember... You didn't have to do anything. The same power that raised Christ from the dead is lives inside of you. Amen. I refuse to be a, live a normal life because I've been raised to a new life. The life of freshness. My marriage is fresh every day. Amen. You, your love for your wife is supposed to be fresh every day. Hey! Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Your, your love for your wife is supposed to be fresh every day. Your love for Christ is supposed to be fresh every day. Your increase is supposed to be fresh every day. No wonder the path of the just, guess what? Brighter and brighter and brighter unto the perfect day because that's the newness of life. It means fresh. Fresh revelation. Fresh idea. In everything you do, 
Hallelujah. You've got to love your wife in a fresh way. But for you, how can you have the same things for one week, for one year? You're the same. Same to Ninida. Same food. Same pay. Get cost of 50 bob. Hallelujah. But I'm just a picture of that. Get cost of 50 bob. Man. And she knows I'll ask her if I get 50,000. Get cost of what? 50 bob. Hallelujah. <laughs> Do something new. Do something new. In terms of buying a because I've been, I've, been, I've been on ladies so much. Ningamba. Mm. I, I'm not those, those are hearing my audio. I'm, I'm not abusing you. I'm abusing my CD. Anyway, <laughs> same thing. I have to have a feeling. I, I wanted to close this. I also have a feeling when it comes to romance, the same. I'm not, I'm not saying you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go to the hotel and say, how much is this? Hallelujah. The brother first have a have. Take out somewhere. Yeah. These guys are easy to take care of. I'm telling you. They I took a don't know. Hallelujah. Hey! You've been raised to a newness of life. So everything about you has got to be what? Fresh. Fresh revelation. The fresh work of the spirit. So that means. I am undefeated, right? Yes. But if I'm in a fight, now walk, walk with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some demons are living slowly. Eh? Some demons are living slowly. That 50,000 is coming. Listen, I am fighting the 12 rounds, right? And they knock me the third round. Right? They knock me the third round. Am I defeated? Am I defeated? They've just knocked me the third round and I wake up. Am I defeated? No. You get back. You get back. You get back. Because you are defeated. Because God doesn't credit the score. Where they knock you round one and they knock you round two. What God wants to see, can this guy rise up? That's what God wants to see. Because he credits faithfulness. Can you stay in that? Up to the 12th round. So I might lose a round, but I'll win the fight. I might lose the battles of life. Somebody abuses you, but I will win the war. That's a triumphant procession. That's the manner of life that I stay in the fight. I keep the good fight. Yesterday, I may be beat up. You understand what I'm saying? I went to work and things didn't work out. But tomorrow I rise up because I stay in the fight. Don't give up. Amen. Why I wanted Gilgabi? Because it knocked me the first round. And I got so excited. I got, that's how they get out. Me, I am going for Gilgabi. We have unfinished business. How can I fail to build ministry in Gilgabi? How can I? You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm going to fight. Because I am triumphant. It's my manner of life. So. Yes, you might lose one round, but it doesn't mean you've lost the what? The fight. Stay in the fight. You were raised in a triumphant manner. It's your manner of life. What's that? Ask you now. No, it's my it's my what? It's my manner of life. It's my manner of life. Every time you're the first in class, it's my manner of life. I think then you call it I was raised. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? I was raised. You understand what I'm saying? That's who you are. Amen. That's who you are. Amen. Your manner of life. Thank you. So I'm going back. Quickly, quickly, quickly. <laughs> Philippians 1.27 Only be sure as citizens so to conduct yourselves that your manner of life will be worthy of the good news, the gospel of Christ. So that whether I do come and see you or absent, I may hear this of you. Then it says that you are standing firm in united spirit and purpose, striving side by side and contending with a single mind for the faith of the gospel 
Okay? Then he says, and do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated in anything in witchcraft. Don't be frightened. Don't be intimidated by witchcraft. Don't be frightened. Don't be intimidated that you're going to fail. Hallelujah. Because you've been raised in a triumphant manner. So you refuse to be frightened and intimidated. You're going to make it. Because that's your manner of life according to the gospel. So you're going to make it in your business. Don't be even frightened that you may not sell the same sin. Don't, be, don't even be frightened and give that to For me, I am going to. I, I think I'm going to fail. No! You have been raised in a triumphant manner. Now, Gamba, in anything by your opponents and adversaries, for such constancy and fearlessness, God wants you to be constant. They knock you round one, come back again. They knock you round two. Then the twelfth round, Marela Baki. Give him one, bro. Now, do you know why I want to go for Gilgabi? I have answered all business. I am fearless. Be fearless. Bring on anything. Hallelujah. Because I've been raised in a triumphant manner. Hey! Hey! As you give a 50,000 for starting, starting this, so I see 50,000. Hallelujah. Finally, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1. Furthermore, brethren, do pray for us that the listen to this one, that the word of the Lord may speed on. Uh-huh. Then it says, spread rapidly the word eh? and run its course. Listen, and be glorified, extolled, and triumph. Pray that the word of God may triumph even as it has done with you. As the word triumph with you. Hey! Who is the word? Who is the word? He's saying, pray that as we go, and indeed this word, eh, that it will have triumph, even as it has had with you. So where is the word? Has it triumphed? Can you fail? That's why I'm fearless. I have the word. It triumphed. That's why I cannot be intimidated by anything. Because the word in me has what? Triumphed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I want to get us today. Hallelujah. If you can just know who you are, the trophy of Christ's victory, and get to know that that's how Satan and his armies perceive you. Hallelujah. And know that by the virtue of the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, that as he was raised in a triumphant manner, so are you also raised in a triumphant manner. It's just your manner of life. You're always triumphing. Everything comes to its successful ending. Bulichimu. Hallelujah. So do not be in, in, intimidated or frightened. Hallelujah. Because the word who is Christ has triumphed in me. Come on, go ahead and begin to say something.